I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. But before I start, I have hidden 3 keys for Far Cry 6 in this video that can be redeemed in the Ubisoft Connect app on PC. Are you one of the lucky ones to find one of them and redeem the game? I have to warn you that you must not already own a copy of Far Cry 6 on the Ubisoft Connect app, otherwise the keys will become useless. I would like to thank Ubisoft for providing me with these keys to give away to you guys. Moving on to the video, let's start with the aspect ratio. You guys know that I just love the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. It gives that cinematic feeling and a few more frames at the same time and using it on a game like this is a must in my opinion. Looking at the anti-aliasing, going from off to SMAA is pointless. To TAA is a lot better, while DLAA has the best and most stable image quality. It really gets rid of the foliage and tree shimmering that TAA has trouble with. For upscaling, using DLSS, the image becomes slightly sharper and reveals some details in the textures. Using FSR 2.2, there's more noticeable shimmering, especially around Aloy's hair, as we're used to with FSR. And using XCSS just breaks a lot of the graphics and particles. It messes up with the water reflections and gives the particles very long ghosting trails. The texture quality setting is pretty straightforward. Each option gradually increases texture resolution. At 1440p max settings, I saw a peak VRAM usage in the 9GB, so you're able to lower a few settings to reduce the VRAM usage if you have an 8GB card. This setting also noticeably affects the water surface textures, so avoid the lower options if you can. Texture filtering in this game is very subtle, to the point where going from 8x to 16x anisotropic filtering didn't really improve image quality, even when comparing side by side. Shadow quality can be disabled entirely or partially, but you won't be getting any performance when doing so, and going from low to medium improves the accuracy of shading, while high and very high seem to use higher resolution shadows and have better accuracy. But that doesn't justify the performance impact, just use medium. Green space shadows have a subtle but important impact to the image, giving it that needed extra detail to make the environment much more believable. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to impact performance. You only have one option for ambient occlusion, which is SSAO, but it looks to be a good implementation here, and barely affects performance. Screen space reflections mostly affect water, although they can affect other materials such as characters' clothes. But in this scene, going from low to high increases the water reflections distance. But what you might not have known is that only the high option enables underwater reflections beneath the water surface. 
it barely affects performance here, so just keep it on high. Level of detail is an important setting in this game. It controls the quality of meshes and the distance they are rendered at. Each option gradually increases level of detail. However, very low, low and medium use a lower mesh quality on some objects, while high and above use more detailed and higher quality meshes. Looking at the pop-in for each option, it seems that medium starts to look acceptable and high has almost unnoticeable pop-in. But high comes with a big performance impact. I would recommend using medium and only use high if you have spare performance. The hair quality setting seems to only affect alloy. Each setting gradually improves the look of the hair and all of them perform within the margin of error. The crowd quality setting controls the distance at which NPCs start to render at their max quality models. The NPCs at low and medium noticeably pop in and out of their higher quality models. While at high, I had a hard time spotting this switch. Since this game is very GPU limited, I did not find this option to affect performance at all. Just use high unless you're CPU limited, which I highly doubt. For terrain quality, going from low to medium improved the look of the terrain and models and also enabled parallax occlusion and going from medium to high further increased the quality of the terrain and parallax occlusion however i couldn't spot any changes with the very high option the water quality on low and medium looked the same across the many scenes i tested however Using high enabled much higher quality water physics. It also enabled sea foam, which looked quite good. I also noticed that on low and medium, the water physics ran at a very low frame rate, irregardless of the game's actual frame rate. Only when using high did the water render at a proper frame rate. And speaking of frame rate, the performance impact of high is negligible. So use high without any worries. The clouds quality setting on low and medium looked the same to my eyes. While high and very high add volumetric fog, which are different from the average clouds in the skybox. As for the quality of the clouds, I couldn't see any improvements. So high seems to be the most obvious option here. The translucency quality setting affects the quality of particles, which can be seen with these bubbles while underwater. Default makes the particles look pixelated and distracting, while high res makes them look as they should. I couldn't spot any difference in performance with either. Parallax occlusion mapping is rarely used in this game, but when it is, it has a very subtle impact on some objects which you will probably not notice while playing the game. When it's working, there is a small impact to performance, but I'd recommend turning it off 
anyways. Medium and high depth of field look and perform the same, while very high slightly improves the quality, but it has a very small yet almost unnoticeable impact to performance. I'd recommend using high if you want to be on the safe side. This game is much better optimized than Horizon Zero Dawn. It also doesn't have the major performance issues the first game launched with, but it's also extremely demanding at the same time. However, using the optimized settings, the average FPS increased by around 92%, letting us go from the 30 FPS range to the 60 FPS range. The minimum FPS increased from an unplayable and stuttery 20 FPS range to the high 30 and low 40 FPS range. And if you wait until the VRAM usage stabilizes by the end of this test run, we'd see that VRAM has slightly decreased by around 500 megabytes or so. And if you have an 8 gigabyte GPU, you can lower the texture quality setting to high and you should be good to go especially if you're playing at 1080p and not 1440p like me.